What time is it, boys and girls? It's Safe Kids and Friends! Welcome to Safe Kids and Friends, starring Tony Lepore, the Providence Dancing Cop, along with Miss Whimsy, librarian. Tonight's guests are Mark Levitt, world-renowned storyteller, and Andrew Cipolla, magician. Hi, boys and girls! an enthusiastic crowd. Yes. With some birthdays? Yeah! Miss Woodsy, do you have some birthdays for us? Yes, we have a lot, Tony, but right. first we want to introduce troop number 210 oh, yeah. from Providence, Rhode Island. They are brownies and daisies. Oh, raise and your hands, Raise girls. your hands. Very good. Okay. And the group leaders' names are Dina and Liz. Thank you for coming. They're in Cardito. They have yeah, a, I know, I time. know. Okay, now let's start off with the September birthdays. Okay. okay. Anthony Iannuzzi. Okay. Jenna Iannuzzi. Okay. Mark Hayes. Okay. Andrew Caparco. Okay. Nicholas Rosito. Okay. Michael Caparco. Ann Dowling. Okay. Shelby Rose Caparco. Okay. Katie and Ellie Iannuzzi. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And now we're going to do October, okay. okay? First, we'll start off with the two we have right here. All right. Now, this is Quinn Sweeney. Quinn. And this is Veronica Borelli. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. I'm sleeping. <laughs> okay. okay. And the other ones for October are Donna Vargas, Linda Parker, Brianna Lapore, Stephen Capaco, and there's one more, let me think. I think it's you. Ah, Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday, everyone. Where is anybody? Where is everybody? Margaret, oh, Margaret. Boo! Boo! Hi, Margaret. Oh, how did you know it was me? Come on, Margaret, with that red hair, give me a break. <laughs> Yeah, me too. This year is a special year for me because I'm 12 and I'm going out alone. <laughs> oh, but you still must go out with somebody like a friend. You can't go alone, right? Well, I have a couple of friends who are going to hang out with me, yes. And my mother had to call their parents. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. She wants to know who you are associated with after all. And I hope you remember all the trick or treat tips. Yes, I do. My mom went over them a hundred times. You know, you know, the ones like stay in the neighborhood. Look both ways when you cross the street. Carry a flashlight. Put reflectors on your costume and your trick or treat bag. Go to the people you know. Make sure the front door is lit. Go down in the front door and never go in the back door. Don't go in those big apartment buildings with all those long hallways. But there's one I don't like, Margaret. Why? Wow, the one you have to take your treats home to be checked. I like oh. to munch on them when I'm, when I'm trick or treating, but you know, we got to make sure those wrappers are not ripped. Oh. Oh, that's true. Well, she wants you to be safe, Eddie. But I can't believe you know all those tips. Well, I had to memorize them. Ah. Yes, I, I, I kept memorizing. She kept quizzing me every two minutes. Ah. I can't wait until Halloween because I'm, I'm telling you the truth, I am going crazy. <laughs> oh, Eddie, I may go to a Halloween party and I can't go with you, but I'm only 10 and my uncle will never let me go. Ha, ah, I don't blame him. Ah. I'm almost an adult. Oh, well, yeah, sure you are, ready. By the way, do you still sleep with the nightlight on oh, in your bedroom with God. that fussy? Oh, I'll <laughs> see you, boys and girls. Bye, bye, bye. He's a grown-up, all right. He's unbelievable. <laughs> boys and girls, I have a wonderful storyteller here tonight. His name is Mark Lovett. Mark, do you have a pumpkin story for them I, right here? 
I do have a pumpkin story. It, this time of year is one of my favorite of the entire year, and I love pumpkins. And Mark, you've done radio before, and you're a storyteller. Tell us a little background. Well, I've done a number of things. I was uh, going to be a lawyer. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then decided it was more fun to travel around to state fairs and juggle and do magic. And I began to tell stories, and I have a radio show called Action Speaks, and I also oh. do my work in about 60 countries around the United You're States. World as a story renowned. Show. I don't know about world renowned, I just take airplanes a lot. <laughs> You're world renowned. Thank Very you, well I appreciate that. that, thank you. Boys and girls, big round of applause for Mark <laughs> Lovett. Thank, thank you, away. Tony. <laughs> Boys and girls, and your parents out here in the audience, I'm happy to see you here today. I have some familiar friends out here, and I love the autumn in New England. I love it when the leaves start turning colors and fall to the ground. I love even the cold air that blows through my now heavier clothes than I used to wear when I ran on the beach with just a bathing suit and a t-shirt. And I love how the darkness starts overcoming the daylight at night. But I also love Pumpkins. There's something about pumpkins that I love. I love seeing in front of people's houses. And I love it when the eyes are carved and the nose are carved and the mouth is carved. And usually there are a couple of teeth left. That's called a jack-o'-lantern. Jack Could you stand up for a second, please? And would you come up here? And tell everybody your name is? My name is Janiah. And could you smile, please? You see, there's a couple of teeth missing in Janiah's mouth. And one day I was walking around my neighborhood. Thank you, Janiah. Great job. Thank you, honey. I appreciate it. Janiah uh, is an old friend of mine, and I'm happy she recognized me. So one day I was walking down the street, and there was a pumpkin here. And a girl was walking towards me, just like Janiah did. And she had a couple of teeth out because she had lost her baby teeth and the grown-up teeth hadn't come in yet. And I looked at her and I looked at the jack lantern and I looked at her and I looked at the jack lantern and I looked at her and I looked at the jack lantern and I thought, she looks like a jack o' lantern. <laughs> so I made up a story and a song about a little girl that wakes up one morning and because she's lost her teeth, she thinks she's become a jack o' lantern. And I'd like you to help me sing the song, if you would, and you too out there in TV land, if you don't mind. Ready? Repeat after me. I'm orange and round, I got a nose and a mouth. Ready? I'm orange and round, I got a nose and a mouth. Got a candle in my belly. I got a candle in my belly. My head comes up. Whenever I want, some people think I'm scary. Boo! My head comes out. Boo! Whenever I want, some people think I'm scary. Boo! Lisa was her name, and she woke up one morning and put her tongue to her teeth, used to be, looked in the mirror, and she went, I, 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 I look like a jack o' lantern. I feel like a jack o' lantern. I think. I am a jack-o'-lantern, and she began to sing, ready? I'm orange and round, I got a nose and a mouth, got a candle in my belly. My head comes off boop, whenever I want. Some people think I'm scary. Oh, I scared myself. Come on in for breakfast, her mother yelled. Uh, I, I don't eat breakfasts. I'm a jack-o'-lantern, and we don't eat breakfasts. Oh, no, said her mother. Jack-o'-lanterns need something to keep them nice and round, and they need something orange for her color. You're right, I'll be right in. She ran in, told her mother she was now a jack-o'-lantern, which was fine for her mother, who made her a big bowl of oatmeal to keep her round and cut up some carrots for her color. And on the way to school, as her mother was driving, Lisa, or should I say Jackie, sang that song. Ready? I'm orange and round, got a nose and a mouth, got a candle in my belly. My head comes up boop, whenever I want. Some people think I'm scary. Boop, 
Ooh, don't scare me while I'm driving. She ran right into school, told her teacher, Mrs. Russell, look, guess what, I'm a jack-o'-lantern. Uh, that's nice, go play with the blocks. <laughs> and she played with the blocks, told all of her friends she was now a jack-o'-lantern, which was fine for everybody except for the old kid in school named Billy. He didn't like things to happen without his permission. He said, you're not a jack-o'-lantern, you're a little girl. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Stop, said Mrs. Russell, for today. Lisa's name is Jackie. And, and, and Billy, it's your job to come up with games for everybody to play with the jack-o'-lantern. Billy liked that because he liked to be in charge. And they came up with all kinds of games. They played duck-duck jack-o'-lantern. They played round and round the jack-o'-lantern bush. They played jack-o'-lantern bridges falling down and they had such a good time playing. Billy got so into it at lunch, he said, Mrs. Russell, don't forget to give Jackie something orange for her color. And after lunch, there was nap time. And during her nap, Jackie had a dream. And in the dream, she dreamt she was a big fat round pumpkin in a field of pumpkins as far as you could see. She dreamt she grew two arms and two legs, and she picked up a stick and like an orchestra conductor, she taught all those pumpkins to sing that song. Pumpkins, are you ready? I'm orange and round, I got nose and a mouth, got a candle in my belly. My head comes off boop, whenever I want. Some people think I'm scary. Boop. When she woke up, her mother was there to drive her home. On the way home, her mother said, it's trick or treat tonight. What are you going to dress up as? I don't need to dress up. I'm a jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> What do you think, anybody will know you're a jack-o'-lantern without costuming? Of course they will, they're smart in this neighborhood. Uh, they went around knocking on doors saying, trick or treat, guess what I am? Uh, a ghost, no. Trick or treat, guess what I am? Uh, a skeleton, no. Trick or treat, guess what I am? Uh, Cinderella, no. <laughs> well, the only one that knew was Mr. Smith. He said right away, I know, you're a jack-o'-lantern. Oh, you're right here, take some of my candy. You don't have to give me any today. She got two bags filled with candy. She ate a whole half a bag on the way home. And by the time she got home, she had so much sugar in her body, she couldn't go to sleep. She said, Mom, I don't think I should go to sleep. I need to protect the house the way the jack o do. Her mother, realizing that indeed she couldn't go to sleep, let her sit out on the porch and watch all the older kids go by in their costumes. But pretty soon, the sugar was starting to leave her body. And Jackie was starting to get a little tired. And the only way she could keep herself awake was to sing that song. I'm orange and rum. I got a nose on. Wow. I got a candle in my be <laughs> belly. Head comes up, up whenever I want. Some people think I'm scary. Woo -ha! Finally, she did fall asleep, and her mother carried her up to bed. In the morning, when Jackie woke up, she put her tongue to her teeth, used to be looked in the mirror, and she said, I still look like a jack-o'-lantern, but I don't feel like one anymore. Jackie, come on down. Carrots for breakfast. No Jackie here, Ma. Just Lisa, the little girl. And how many times I got to tell you, I hate carrots for breakfast. She went down, told her mother she was back to being a little girl, which was fine for her mother. But on the way to school, as her mother was driving her daughter, she kind of missed that song. So she asked if she would sing it one more time, and guess what? Lisa, or rather, Jackie, or rather, Lisa, did. Everybody ready? I'm orange and round, I got a nose and a mouth, got a candle in my belly. My head comes off boop, whenever I want. Some people think I'm scary. Boo. And I thank all of you for being part of my story. And thank you out there, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls. Thank you. Love it. Thank you, Tony. Thank Appreciate you. It's an honor to have you on. Oh, it's great. And I look forward to seeing you Christmas time. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and maybe we'll have you on another time. I would love to. Just don't give me a ticket. All right. I'll try not to. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Boys and girls, you ready for magic? Yeah! Okay. I have a fantastic magician here tonight. 
His name is Andrew Sapola. Hi, Hi, Andrew. You've been Hi. on before. Yep. Yep. And now I find out that you're acting, you're doing stage acting. Yep. And plus magic. Wow. You're very versatile. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Are you uh, got some magic for the show? I do. All right. I'm yep. gonna. I'm gonna hand it to you. All right. How's everybody doing? Yeah! All right. You guys like magic? Yeah. All right. All right. You guys like Halloween? Yeah. yeah! All right. I have a little bit of close-up magic here. Close-up magic is magic that's up close. It's a little bit smaller. It's not like big for the stage. Big, uh, big props. And this trick is uh, really uh, uh, classic in magic. It involves three cups and three little balls, and of course, a magic wand. Now, it's really cool, this trick, because they're solid cups and they're solid balls, but the trick is that the solid balls can pass through the solid cups. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna take this, the, the middle ball and place it on top of the middle cup, and I'm gonna cover it up. And if I give a tap, just like this, it passes through the bottom. It's pretty cool, I'll do it again. I'm gonna cover it up, I'm gonna take the second ball now, place it on top, give it a little tap, and it passes down to join the other one. I'll do it one more time. I'll take the last ball, place it on top, give a tap, and now there's all three under the cup. Pretty cool. So the balls pass right through the cups, they disappear and reappear, I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna take this ball, place it inside my hand, give a little wave and a tap and a blow. And your ball disappears. What? Gone. Completely gone. Oh, I'll make it reappear. If I tap the cup, there it is. It reappears underneath the cup. Now I'm going to take a ball. I'm going to place one ball under that cup. I'm going to take a ball, place it under that cup. And I'm going to take a ball and place it under that cup. So now there's a ball under each cup, right? Now watch this. I'm going to take the ball out of this cup. There it is. Do you see it on the end of the magic wand? I'm gonna place it inside this cup. And there it is. And now it's gone from that cup. Now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this one and I'm gonna magically place it inside that glass. And so now there's two in that glass. Now, one, two, three. So now there's a ball under each cup. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there. But I'm gonna take one of them away and I'm gonna place it inside my pocket to get rid of it. I'm gonna take a second one too. And I'll take the third one away too, just to make it completely fair. And guess what happens? If I tap the cup, guess what happened? It came back. Yep, it came back. They always come back to the cups. It's really weird, I don't, I don't get it. But when I tap the cup, not only did that one come back, but this one came back too. The other one, you wanna take a look? All right, let's take a look. There it is. All three of them came back. It's pretty cool, right? I don't even get it myself. But the weirdest part is, is where the pumpkins came from. There's one there, one there, one there, and also one there. Thank you. All right. Now. I'm gonna have Tony come up and help me with the next trick. Let's give him a round of applause. How did you do that? Well, it's magic. Well, that's right. All right, now okay. for this next trick, I'm gonna have you uh, help me with this trick. I have two pieces of tissue paper here. Mm -hmm. And uh, you look pretty strong, so I'm gonna have you take that one and we're gonna just rip it down the center, just like this on the count of three. One, two, three, there we go. Now I'll take them back. I'm gonna rip them up some more. and I'm gonna ball it up into a little tiny ball, just like this. I'm gonna ball it up, nice and small, and if I blow on it and snap my fingers, everyone blow on it. Now that's when the magic happens. All the pieces, the ripped up pieces, are gonna come together and restore. Watch this.
Not only did they restore, but they changed into a funny pumpkin hat. Wow, that's cool. And that for you. Place it on your head. Isn't that silly? <laughs> All right. Now, one of my favorite parts of Halloween is trick or treating. You guys like trick or treating? Yeah. I love trick or treating. All right. I came prepared. Yeah. I brought my trick or treating bucket here. I have my trick or treating bucket here, but unfortunately, it's empty. There's no candy inside. Um, so I need to use some magic. And I saw that Tony had a piece of candy. He was hiding it. It was right there behind his ear. See? Oh. He was hiding it. I wish I knew it. I didn't eat it all day. There's actually one under his armpit, too. This one. <laughs> Let's see. Right out here. Over there. There's one right there. It's behind your ear. Behind your ear. Do it to you. Oh, wait. Ugh. Oh, look. It's a different kind. Wow, right. that's cool. Wow. There's one, there's one right there. Yeah. Uh, inside your ear? Well, let's take a look. Uh. Now, watch this. If I just, everyone wave their hands. Wave their hands. Do you hear it all appearing? You hear it, you hear it all in there? Watch this. And there it all is. Woo! Candy oh, for wow. everybody. Thank you. Let's see, let's see that thing. Look at this. Look at this, boys and girls. Wow. That's fantastic. Nice job. Thank you. Andrew Sapota. Thank you. Big round of applause. Thank you, Andrew, for You're coming welcome. on. You're fantastic. Wow, look at these children in all these different costumes. Let's go through all these costumes really quick. We have a, this this Star Wars, maybe? Star Wars from Star Wars? It's actually Captain Rex. Oh, Captain Rex, okay. And we have a princess. Yeah, it's a fairy Batman. Guy. Batman. Tell me what you are really quick. We have, oh, that's me, okay. Um, a Power Ranger. Okay. Monster. Monster. A Power Ranger. A Power Ranger. A cat. cat. A princess. princess. Harry Potter. Empire. Um, um, scientist. Scientist. Dinosaur. Dinosaur. Mermaid. 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 And what is she? Anna. Um, okay, and what are you? Elsa. And we have, tell me again. The Mario Luigi. Luigi. Mario. Mario. Come over here, Luigi and Mario. Come right here. That way the camera can get. Now we even have a dancing cop here. Let's see, dancing cop, come here and see if you are really a dancing cop. Are you ready? Huh? You ready? Get that whistle ready. Okay, let's do it. Come on. Okay, one more, one more, let's see the leg. All right, give me five, give me five. All right, give me five, give me five. Okay, all right, what a show, we're gonna wrap it up. Boys and girls, thank you for being here tonight. You're gonna make a great, well, this is gonna be a great Halloween show. I wanna thank you for watching. I wanna thank my crew. My camera people, my director, did a great job tonight. And all your parents, say, give your parents a big round of applause for bringing you here tonight. Okay. Now, if you want to be on the next show, just give me a call. 401-727-2509 or email me at provdancingcop at gmail.com. Provdancingcop at gmail.com. You can also get me on Facebook, Providence Dancing Cop. Just give me a call and you can come right back on this show and our next show will be our Thanksgiving special. Thank you for watching, be safe. You're watching Peg R.I. TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. This is Tony the Dancing Cup for Safety Tip of the Month. You know, I read this article online 
about this boy who was bullied, Bailey O'Neill. Uh, I believe he uh, went to a school in Pennsylvania uh, to the point where he had his nose broken and he sustained a concussion. He was in the house, hospital for two weeks and then he expired. Bullying is a problem, but now it's getting to be an epidemic. I go to the schools and I preach uh, about bullying, what to do if you're bullied. Tell the teachers right away, tell your mom, you gotta stop it right away. You can't let it go too long because what'll happen is it'll just get worse and worse. So you have to stop it, you have to nip it right away. But now, it's getting to the point I have to add something to it. Is your son or daughter a bully? Find out. Ask them. It's a very, very uncomfortable question to ask your children, but you must. Is your child a bully? And most of you are going to say no, because they act normal at home. But once they get into the school, their whole personality changes sometimes. So I'm talking to you parents out there, please ask your children if they're a bully. Do you know? I bet you don't. This is Tony the Dancing Cop for Safety Tip of the Month.